When it comes to reintroducing predators to the British landscape, the bear is generally at the bottom of the pile. And that pile is the big three. You know, you've got the bear, the wolf and the lynx, who we are slowly but surely coming around to the idea of having back in the British landscapes. But doesn't a bear just seem like a step too far? You know, bears are big. They have long claws, they have powerful jaws. Didn't one nearly get Leo? <laughs> In this video, we're going to explore the idea of introducing the black bear to the UK. Now, it wasn't formerly native like the brown bear was, but I think that there are some arguments that we have to explore that makes it a more likely candidate. Or perhaps, you know, bears in the British landscapes really is just a step too far. And if we were to see bears in the UK anytime soon, how might that look? That's what we're going to get into in today's video. So it's worth noting that the brown bear lived in the UK a very long time ago. We're not exactly sure when, but evidence suggests that bears went extinct around 1500 years ago. Along with many other large land animals that would have formerly been native, they would have been here since the last ice age. And some may have escaped from Roman imports. They like to use them for entertainment purposes. I mean, I don't know, what would you do with a bear for entertainment purposes? Sounds kind of cruel and kind of messed up. But you know, now and in the past, bears have been woven into our culture here in the UK. And today they're portrayed as almost Almost like this bumbly friendly character that's on the lookout for some berries or maybe some honey or you know they're definitely gonna have some of lots porridge and does this like friendly almost cuddly portrayal mean that we'll be more accepting of them if they were reintroduced no I don't necessarily think so but in any event bears were here and they're not here now and you can bet like other large land predators it was habitat loss but hunting especially that caused them to go extinct so why the black bear? You know, if the black bear was never formally native, why is there an argument to introduce it? Well, you know, that's a great question. So out of the eight bear species I think there is globally, there are two which are really the main fit for a UK, or two which are more likely to be a better fit for the UK, the black and the brown. Actually, quick fun fact for you now, the grizzly bear is in fact a brown bear. It's actually considered to be a subspecies and the distinction derives from the regions in which they're found. And it's the grizzly bears which are actually found inland. You know, they live on a diet which is more richer in plants. But anyway, back to the UK and the bears, the black and the brown. What I want to do now is put them up head to head or muzzle to muzzle and compare their characteristics, their traits, their sizes, and really how they coexist with people around the world. First up, let's take a look at the size difference. The black is on average a much smaller bear than the brown, with males averaging around 110 kilograms and females at around 60 kilograms. Whereas male brown bears, if they're feeding on fish and living on the coast, they average at around 217 and females at around 150. And I found that even the brown bears, which are living inland, which were feeding on a more plant-based diet, they still averaged at around 180 kilograms. Brown bears are just way more chunky and this chunk is spread across a much larger frame. Ground to shoulder, brown bears are about four foot and far taller when standing, whereas black bears, shoulder height is about two to three foot. And you know, obviously we need to allow for some variance in sizes. You know, sometimes you're gonna get black bears which are considerably larger than some brown bears, but for the most part, the black bear is smaller than the brown bear. And it doesn't just stop there. A brown bear's claws are considerably longer than a black bear's and a black bear's jaw, well, a brown bear's jaw is about twice as strong as a black bear's. So, you know, given these traits, you can probably see why a black bear is more suited to a UK landscape and its people. But I know what you're thinking, like, Rob, this is still a large carnival that does have claws, albeit they're smaller. It has teeth, you know, it could still rip through me, my dog and my sheep, or maybe even my sandwiches when I'm off out on a hike, you know, it's, it's a danger to me. Well, actually, I was quite surprised to find this out, but around 85% of a black bear's diet consists of vegetation and the meat which they do eat is quite often carrion. It's animals which have already died and they're feeding off the carcass. And it's interesting because black bears don't often rummage around and dig for bulbs and roots and things. They much prefer to eat, you know, the fresh shoots on leaves in the spring and they love berries and they love nuts. They love acorns, hazelnuts. Oh, and insects. They love eating like ants and larvae and bees. And of course the bees honey, you can't forget the honey. And when living near rivers, black bears will in fact catch fish. They'll catch salmon and they'll catch trout. And interestingly, black bears, they hunt at night. They fish at nighttime because 
because of their black coats, they've adapted to this because, you know, the black coat just sort of gives them away against the bright sky. And you know, since black bears hibernate throughout the spring and the summer, they have a sole purpose and that is to get as fat as they can and obviously to reproduce, but to get as fat as they can with minimal effort. I mean, why would they spend all day chasing down a deer, burning thousands of calories when they could just sit on their bum and eat the ripe plums which are around them and maybe the honey, which is just, you know, an arm's reach away. You know, you would do that if you were a bear, you just chill. However, if the juicy plums aren't available and you find yourself in a habitat which isn't rich in this abundant plant life, like the black bears of Labrador in Canada. Now these bears are exceptionally carnivorous and they prey on weak and young caribou. You see, the thing to understand about bears, about the black and the brown bear, they are adaptable to their environment and the food which is available within it. So you can see why if they were ever released to the UK, we'd have to make sure that, sure that there was like a rich, abundant plant life everywhere, apple trees, plum trees, you know, you name it, honey, just there. But we'll get more down that line of thinking in just a second. Let's continue to compare the black and the brown bear, specifically how they interact with people. And this is where the black bear actually seems to start looking like a much more likely candidate. So throughout North America, there are many, many encounters with black bears on the daily. And most of these are non-aggressive. The bear is simply inquisitive, you know, looking for food, which is often quite tasty and readily abundant in areas where people are found. And for the most part, these encounters are just that. They're an encounter, a, a crossing of paths. And when these encounters are aggressive, there's usually no attack. You know, a black bear will try to intimidate through mock charging or like swatting the ground to like let you know that I'm a bear. And if you get any closer, this could be you. It rarely leads to any kind of injury to people. Whereas encounters with brown bears, they generally do and they are more aggressive because female black bears are nowhere near as protective of their young as brown bears are. You know, that's not saying that you should get between, you know, like a mother black bear and her young, just definitely do not do that. But, you know, between the two, brown bears are way more defensive. And in brown bears, this is often the main cause for fatal attacks. You know, if you come between a mother bear and her young, I think that's kind of it. But with the black bear, in cases where encounters do turn aggressive and there is an attack that causes like an injury to a person, this is usually in national parks, in wild areas where there's like a, say like a tourist hotspot or like a pinch point where there's like a, a small human settlement. And it's in these areas where people often feed bears or where, you know, dustbins are easily accessible to black bears. You know, some studies actually found in America, I forget which state it was or which park, but you know, they completely limited the feeding of bears and they they made all of their dustbins like completely closed off and this drastically dropped the number of, of attacks on people. But you know, this being said, black bear attacks do also occur when you're off out deep in a national park. Say if you're off out on a hike, you're fishing, you're camping, you cross paths with a wild bear that isn't used to seeing humans, you know, this is when an, an attack can take place. And the facial attacks, when they do happen, they're almost always predatory. You know, when the black bear just doesn't know what a human is. They see it as a threat, they see it as food. And you know, the thing is, when you start looking at these more serious, more fatal bear attacks, although they're not as common as the brown bear, they do still happen. I counted through some records, and since the year 2000 in North America, 30 people have died as a result of black bear attacks. Now, it also had like a little description going with death and almost always the circumstances were when these people were off out deeper in the wilderness, they were hiking, they were camping. You know, for the most part, they weren't taking place in urban or even semi-urban areas. These were bears which weren't used to seeing people. And you know, I have to admit, I like it got me. I, I probably looked a little bit too deeply into some of these bear attacks than I should have done, but it just left me with this feeling. It left me with this question like, are bears really necessary? Do we need them in a British landscape? Do the positives of having a bear, whether it's black or brown, whatever it is, do those positives outweigh this risk of, of potentially a, a brutal fatal attack? Bears are apex predators, and if they were reintroduced to the UK, they would initiate the trophic cascades. You know, through the ecology of fear, they would regulate deer populations. You know, if a bear, whether it's black or brown, was reintroduced to the UK, if, you know, people weren't there, the bear would just do just fine. There would be enough food for it to eat, whether if it was just, you know, deer or, you know, the leftover McDonald's at a service station bin, bears would do just fine. But, you know, given this, inherent danger that bears possess to people, no matter how small, 
with black bears, I don't think we'll see truly wild bears to the UK in the next 30 years, say. There's just too much risk involved. Unless, now hear me out on this one. Now, this isn't true rewilding as such, but I think that this is the only way to get creatures like, you know, the wolf and the bear back in the UK anytime soon, you know, within the next year to, to five years. It depends how fast we work. I'm proposing that we create large fenced enclosures. Now, I'm not talking like a zoo. I'm talking like extremely large scale here. Now, I don't know the exact size or even where something like this could take place in the UK. You know, I haven't really thought it through that much, but this would really take, this would really mean that the UK is like putting their stamp on rewilding and saying, you know, we're gonna make some space for nature. It would have to be heavily monitored and studied, but the only interaction that humans would have with this super rewilding reserve, that's what I'm calling it, super rewilding reserve. The only interaction that humans would have with this would be if, say, a bear or a wolf escaped. That is when there would be some intervention. We would have to essentially create as as a complete ecosystem as we could here in the UK fenced in. Now, look, this is like, I, you might comment on this video and be like, Rob, what are you talking about? This isn't possible. This is entirely hypothetical, but it's an idea that I'm gonna explore more in a future video. I'm gonna explore this a little bit more because you know, humans have done far more miraculous and crazy things than construct a super rewilding reserve. Big old fence, loads of animals in there, bears, wolves, herbivores, different, you know, like river systems. I think it would be really interesting to do something like this. Kind of reminiscent of Ostrava's Plus and you know, that rewilding project in Holland, although I don't necessarily think they had predator-prey relationships going on in there, like with like bears and stuff going on. But you know, what do you think? Is the black bear a better candidate for reintroduction to the UK? Would you accept that this time tomorrow that the black bear was reintroduced to the UK? Or is the idea of a bear in a UK landscape just way too crazy, it's too far? What are your thoughts on this super rewilding reserve? You know, can it happen, should it happen? Just let me know what you're thinking about this whole thing. There's been a lot to go through in this video. You know, creatures like large bears, large carnivores, it always creates such a great debate. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments. In the meantime, check out the links on the screen now, but thank you so much for watching, leave curious.